In this part of the exercise, I'm going to talk about layers. Uh, some, of, some of the selection tools talk about saving selections and how to transform shapes and selections. So let's go back to Photoshop here. Um, <clears throat> I forgot to save my file in the last uh, video. I want to point out something. In the upper left <clears throat> on the tab will be the file name that you're working on. And there'll, in the world of Adobe, if there's an asterisk, next to your file name, that means that uh, you've made a change to the file and have not saved the file. So asterisk means the file has not been saved. So let me save my file by doing a command S because I'm on the Mac, or you can do a control S on PC, or again, or again, you can go file, save. But I'm gonna just do command S, and there my file is saved. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about in this video is layers. Layers is a crucially important uh, part of Photoshop and it's kind of like um, you know if, if this was a, a real a physical painting if I were to place a piece of glass on top of this painting and then paint on top of the glass that's kind of sort of how layers work and you can make bunches and bunches of layers and have groups of layers and all kind of stuff so over in the lower right um, is our layers palette which we've already seen and this is the layer that's active that we're working on. Layer zero is what it was named, defaulted to. Um, now here's a bunch of uh, icons in the bottom here. Some of them we'll get to. But this one with the uh, square with a plus sign on it, if you hover over it and hold there long enough, it'll a tool tip will come up and it'll say what it is, create new layer. So click once on the... Uh, square with a plus sign on it and the new layer will come up and it's always a good idea to name layers so let's get in the habit of doing that right away so if you hover over where it says layer one and double click um, you can then name it whatever you want name it shapes for example because we're going to draw shapes in it so where this is grayed out um, is the layer that's active okay so like if I select <clears throat> layer zero and it's it's grayed out like this, um, I don't know what a better way to shouldn't it. They used to be blue in the olden days, but um, I can only work on this layer that is enabled. So make sure the shapes layer is enabled by clicking on it, and that's what it should look like. Now I can come over here on my canvas and I, anything I do over here on the canvas is only going to be on this shapes layer. All right, so I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the magical world of selection tools. Um, so to get started, uh, click on the marquee selection tool. Make sure that's active like this. Now um, in the upper right section, Click, hold, and drag, and just make a rectangle about that that big. <clears throat> Here's something new, the zoom tool. Let's zoom in on this so we can look at it. A couple ways to get there. <clears throat> the very, at the very bottom of the toolbar, right above the, the colors, uh, is a magnifying glass, and it's a zoom tool. If you hover over it, you can see, if you hit the letter Z on the keyboard, you can activate the zoom tool. I'll just click on it, but I typically use the letter Z. Now, whenever you activate the zoom tool, if you come up to uh, up here, the um, you'll see this thing called Scrubby Zoom. I like to I do like to use this, um, so I keep that checked. This Zoom All Windows is like you'll have several. You might have like two or three files open, different tabs. I select that but um, I keep this select uh, scrubby zoom selected so and then this resize windows to fit I keep that selected anyway so okay with the zoom tool selected I can hover over my marching ants rectangle and I can click hold and if I click hold and drag to the right it gets bigger if I click hold and drag to the left it gets smaller so and then I can use my wheel mouse on my uh, use the wheel of my mouse to move up and down here. So let's zoom in here so we can see what the heck we're doing. 
Once again, activate the marquee selection tool. Okay, so what am I up to here? Now, one thing a lot of people don't know about the selection tools is you can add to a selection and take away from a selection. Hold down, hover, remember the marquee selection tools is active, right? Hover within the, uh, the marching ants, hold down the shift key, and you'll see a little plus sign will um, come next to the, the, uh, the crosshairs. If you click, hold, and drag outside of the selection like I just did and let go, see how it adds to the selection. So let me do that. Do it again. Hover anywhere within the uh, marching ants, hold down the shift key, click, hold, and drag, and, and make like another rectangular shape. So get something similar. That doesn't be exactly the same. We get something that kind of looks like that. Now what if I want to take away from a selection? That's um, on a Mac it's option, hold down and click and hold down the option key or on the PC it's alt. So I'm going to hold down option on the Mac, click, hold and drag up into the shape and it takes away. So let me do that, let's do that again. Hover anywhere outside of the marching ants. On the Mac, hold down Option. On the PC, hold down Alt. You'll get the minus sign. Click, hold, and drag up into the selection. So now we have this goofy looking selection here. And we could, you could like take away from the selection on the inside. In fact, let's do that. Why, why not? We still, have the, we still have the marquee selection tool active. Hover within the um, the shape within the marching ants, hold down option or alt, and you get the minus sign, click hold and drag and drag like kind of a square shape. Okay, so what the heck does all this mean? Now let's activate the paint bucket tool and fill this and we'll see what happens here. So remember, you can activate the paint bucket tool by clicking on it, but I suggest you get used to the, using the shortcut keys. And again, the shortcut keys are available to you just hover over it and then it'll tell you G. Okay, so let me hit the letter G, hover over my marching ants, click, and that's what I get. That's really cool. All right, so now sometimes you'll be doing like a, you know, a complicated project with a lot of selections and stuff like that. And you'll have to, some, there will be applications where you have to go back to a selection. So we did all this work on our selection here. Let's save it. Let's go, and here's how you do that. Go to Select, Save Selection, and name it. So just you can just call it Shape 1 or something, you know, whatever makes sense to you. And you'll see um, it should default to New Channel, which is what you want. So click that, click OK. All right, so now deselect this, Command-D, and now go up to Select, and now Load Selection will be an option available to you. So go Select, Load Selection, and if you hit the drop-down menu, <clears throat> the selection you chose will, um, or the selection you just saved will be available to you. And of course you could have several, you know, in a file. So click on that and then click OK. And lo and behold, there's your marvelous marching ants. <clears throat> okay, so that's cool. Now, um, let's see. All right, so I have the, when you have marching ants going on, you can do another thing. You can transform the shape. So marching ants uh, available, or marching ants are visible. You can <clears throat> go to edit and then free transform. Now if you hover over free transform, you'll see on the Mac, it'll say command T is the uh, shortcut. And on the PC, of course, it's control T. So let me do that instead, because I, I you will do this a lot probably in your Photoshop career. So I'm going to do Command or Control T 
and I'll get a uh, bounding box. Now, if I this is called a bounding box in the world of uh, Adobe and these little square thingies. Uh, those are called handles. So I can grab a handle and I can smush and squeeze and, you know, do whatever I want here to my shape, right? And like, I don't like that. So I'm going to go command Z to undo it and get back to where it was. Now, if I, again, if I want to smush stuff, I can just, you know, or distort, you know, I can just grab these handles and distort it. That's great. Let me do Command Z again. But what if I want to keep this? I just want it smaller or bigger. I want to keep it in proportion. Hover over the, um, a, I like to use the corner for this. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, hover over a corner, click and hold, then hold down the Shift key. Hold down Shift, then click, hold, and drag, and it keeps it in proportion. So, make it your complicated shape a little bit more teeny tiny like that now when you see a bounding box um adobe is asking that's why adobe's waiting for you to say yes i want this or no i hate it okay so if i hit the return key i will accept the um the transformation okay and remember if you don't like it you can always command z right but i like that uh just as a little thingy i want to point out you can also redo stuff if you go to edit uh, redo it's shift commander control Z but I, you know I, I, I real honestly I hardly ever use this but that's just me but anyway so um, so that's that so let me uh, oh okay and but wait there's more okay I zoomed in a whole bunch of course I could activate the zoom tool and I could zoom back out like this and that's far out and groovy, you know, great, wonderful. A cool uh, command to know is command or control zero on the keyboard because that will center your work. And that, that's the case for InDesign and uh, Adobe Illustrator as well. So command or control zero. And there is my um, shape that I want. I'm going to do a command D to deselect. I got the ye old uh, asterisk next to my file name, so let me save it with a command S, and you save your file too. So your your file should look similar to mine at this point. Okay.